Hey guys, um, it's been a while since I'm back. I'm sorry that things has been a little bit slow. I actually injured myself. I fell off while longboarding and I injured the top of my foot. So I was kind of like a cripple for like a few weeks. And now that I can work a little bit better, I'm finally getting back to working on a miniature house and also other things. After I was injured, Singapore is going through this circuit breaker thing, which basically means that we are all stuck at home for the most part. And yeah, I haven't been out of the house for quite some time now. <laughs> a lot of things is closed and I can't really get a lot of stuff. But I managed to get the roof completed, so there's that. 
so let me get straight into it now. You've seen the process of what I've done so far and honestly I was really hoping that I can finish the roof in this one video but fortunately it took me six days to finish what I've done so far. I actually have to make the top of the roof but I didn't have enough Bristol board so I have to delay that and I also didn't weather the roof because I figured that it would make sense if I weathered the roof when I have the whole roof done. So yeah, this is what I have so far. I wanted to go through a little bit about each day just so you can have a deeper sense of what I did so that you will not make the same mistakes that I did. <laughs> the last video I actually finished the front of the roof and left the sides empty. So on day 16, I actually continued the slates for the two sides and I found out that I didn't cut enough wood slates. So in the book, it actually says that I needed 630 slates but I actually did my calculation on this piece of paper. I actually counted the slates for each side of the roof. If my calculation is correct, I would need around 1,190 slates. It's like I needed more than half. The fact that the number of roof slates was inaccurate really slowed things down for me because I have to buy more wood before I can continue. I have to cut all the wood strips again and also I didn't have the template that I used in the beginning anymore so I have to remake those templates. It was just repeating of the same thing but I could have saved some time not doing those things again if I had cut the correct amount right in the first place. So hopefully the numbers that I give you would be helpful to you if you're going to do the same thing. This is a number that I got from my own roof. You can take it with a pinch of salt if you want to make more or make a little bit less or whatever. Just make sure that if you're doing the same thing as me, making the template at the side, just don't use it first until you finish the roof so that in case you need to make more, you don't have to really restart everything from scratch. And I realised that when you want to glue down the slates, right, it's actually better to glue one row first and then trim so that it's like one straight line before you place another row and that way everything would actually be straight. I did this method because I found out that my very first roof slate here curls up like this because the height was uneven especially since the wood strips that I bought is not the correct size so I have to cut the width of it and because of that it's very easy to misalign and also when you're cutting the wood strips into slates right I really recommend that you Put them all together like bunch by bunch and then when you're actually gluing it down just take the whole bunch and then glue it down instead of like dumping everything in the bag and then just picking up whatever and glue it on because then all four sides of the wood will be uneven after doing all this right my third and last one of the roof slate is actually the nicest out of the batch and i'm actually quite sad that the front one looks like this um it's not very obvious now because it's painted but it was really obvious in the beginning and I was quite upset and because of the way I was filming the process, I couldn't really see that it was not aligned. I was just gluing it down without really thinking much and this is what happened. So yeah, hopefully you will not make the same mistake I did. On day 18, I actually started making the dormer windows which is these three things that you're seeing. I like to do things together. So while I was cutting the wood for the dormer windows, I also cut the chimney. And when I was measuring out the size for the chimney, I got a big shock because the chimney is almost the size of my head. It's really big. Like from the book, you only see from the side. So it looks like, oh, you know, it looks really thin. And then you see this and it's like, <laughs> it's so big. But I, I've never really been to like these kind of houses before so I don't really know if this is common but at least now you can see all sides of it. <laughs> I just want to let you know that even though it is just balsa wood, it is still really hard to cut through because of the thickness of the wood. If you're cutting along the grain, it's really easy. It's just like one or two cuts and it's done. But if you're cutting against the wood grains, it's actually quite painful like I end up using a saw but the problem with the saw is that it actually kind of snaps towards the end and when it snaps it actually sometimes remove part of the wood I actually cut a few times because of this because it was just not neat and then I realized that hey actually I can just cut it and glue it back down so that it looks like it's normal again 
and that could have saved me a bit of time so you can do that if it happens to you but I was really irritated by the fact that it was so difficult to cut through even though it's just balsa wood I don't know maybe different shops sells different type of balsa wood and mine was just not that great I don't know it seems really sturdy and and it's okay it's just that I don't have like a bench saw or something I have to use whatever tools I have to get it cut so it wasn't as fun as I thought it would be. <laughs> All these little things really do add up and somehow I just spent a lot of time on them. It's it's quite quite irritating. On day 19, I worked on the bricks for the dormer windows. So I don't know if you can recognize this, but I actually make the same type of bricks in day 7 and 10 in the video, which is here. It's exactly the same thing. And when I realized that, I was like, holy shit, I should have made more then. I wouldn't have to do it now. I don't know. I was just following the book blindly, so I didn't really think about it. But if I had made more instead of the exact amount for this area, I wouldn't have to spend more time on it. So I actually basically had to do everything from scratch again like I had to paint the bristol board and I had to cut the individual bricks and then I have to glue them together and I have to you know just I have to do everything again at least I still have the paint I actually try to save my paint as much as I can and they're all in like bags like this and I put them in a ziplock bag so thankfully the bricks colors were still usable so I didn't have to remix the color again so at least there's that <laughs> Oh, another thing I wanted to say is that I think the book got the measurement wrong for the bricks part because it actually says that the width here is 0.5 cm but the dormer window is actually 1 cm and from the photo, it looks like it covers the whole part of this front side. I went with my gut feeling and just decided to take the whole width and you know, glue it down because that's what it looks like on the photo. Yeah, hopefully I'm not wrong <laughs> but it should be correct. On day 20, I actually glued down the slates for the sides and then um, I was supposed to work on the chimney pots but then I realised that, oh, I didn't buy any chimney pots. I forgot about it, I didn't see it and I was like, shit. But I went to Miniature Marketplace which is the website that I also bought some of my miniature house materials and I realised that the chimney pots that they sell doesn't look like the one that was in the book. Uh, as you know, the book doesn't tell you where she get her materials so it was kind of difficult to find the exact one but I think I was pretty sick of having to buy more things again so I decided not to wait anymore and I just tried to find whatever that was in my house to make it work My boyfriend is actually into film photography so he actually has a lot of this like film canister lying around they're just empty containers and they are really light so it's perfect to put on the wood and I realised that um, the cap can be kind of like a design if I glued it down like this. The ones that I use is different from this. I have just felt that the cover looks nicer when I flipped it and things like that. So um, I used those instead. It looked decent. I'm hoping that it's convincing enough that it looks like a chimney pot. Hopefully it is after weathering but we'll see how it goes. It it actually looks okay lah from here. <laughs> Afterwards, I painted a layer of gesso on the chimney pots and also the roof slates. And then, I just put a layer of paint over the roof slate and I had to let it dry overnight. And then, the last day, which is the sixth day, I painted the second layer of roof with the colours that I have to mix. And it was really fun because of the texture that I managed to get out of it. And I also painted the chimney pots and also painted the inside of the pots this way so that um, it looks like it's a hole. And then I glued the dormer windows down and then after that the roof. I had to prepare more zinc paper which again I actually did that before on day 7 to 10. I really wish that I made more or like realised that I would actually need more zinc paper for the roof so that I wouldn't have to redo it again because I really don't like doing the zinc paper part because I have to wait quite a while before the silver paint is dried. I actually added fillers in between the spaces. I didn't really have to do that because the zinc paper covers all of the gaps and I was like, shit, I just wasted time again. But just make sure that you don't do that because you really don't have to. Yeah, it's done. Yay!
so this is what I have so far. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. I've already bought more Bristol board for the top of the roof here. So I'll be able to do that next time. Things has been a bit crazy recently because of COVID-19 and everything is just happening very fast. Um, we're on like circuit breaker and I myself haven't been out of the house for like more than a month because I injured my leg like one week before the circuit breaker happened. So I'm actually, I haven't stepped out of the house for like a very long time. I am getting a bit restless and I'm really trying to not let it get to me but I'm still trying to put as much stuff out as I can even though it's a little bit slow so thank you again for being patient with me like everything is done by me so it does take a while for me to get things done sometimes and I really really appreciate you know all your support um, especially my patrons who has been with me for like quite a while now and they've just been the sweetest and I'm so so blessed to have you guys as my patron like Thank you so much. So that's all I have for now. Um, I hope that you're doing okay at home while all of this is happening, you know. Stay at home and really, really take care of yourself and your family. I'll see you guys around soon. Bye-bye.